Week two is here, so I'm bringing you my complete fantasy football rankings for week two. We are going through running back, wide receiver, tight end, QB, defense, and kicker rankings for you. So make sure you tune in, strap your seatbelt in, and let's get going. Starting it off with our running backs. When we started off, we got in the S tier. We have Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor, and Kyron Williams. Of course, we don't know if CMC is going to be playing in week two, so I am excluding CMC. Of course, if he plays, we're putting him in the S tier. Brees Hall versus the Tennessee Titans. Loved what we saw from this Jets offense. I think there's a lot of improvements, even though they lost to the 49ers. Excited to see what Brees Hall can do. We got B. John Robinson versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Last week, 16 fantasy points. I felt like was the floor. I think things are going to continue to go up. Saquon Barkley off of that triple touchdown day going up against the Atlanta Falcons like this matchup for Saquon Barkley. Honestly, you could maybe debate that Saquon should be ahead of Bijan in these tiers. Jonathan Taylor against Green Bay and then Kyron Williams rounding out this S tier. Moving on to the A tier, we have Isaiah Pacheco, Derek Henry, Joe Mixon, Jameer Gibbs, and Devon A. Chain. Start off, off with Isaiah Pacheco. Absolutely love this matchup versus Cincinnati. There's a chance that Cincinnati is going to be without T. Higgins again in week two so I think that's going to make them really struggle to move the ball which is going to give the Chiefs the advantage we saw how easily Rasheed Rice and Xavier Worthy were able to catch the ball I think this just gives them getting up in the second half absolutely love it for Isaiah Pacheco Derrick Henry looked not super explosive and didn't really have the touchdown upside in week one versus the Chiefs but going up against the Las Vegas Raiders very easy matchup have this as an A-level matchup for the Baltimore Ravens love it for Derrick Henry next guy is going to be Joe Mixon Joe Mixon we saw pretty much be the bell cow for the Houston Texans we assumed that was going to be the case, but Joe Mixon is getting up there in age, so we didn't quite know what it was going to look like. But this week, Joe Mixon is going up against the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears defense looked good last week. They kind of were the only thing looking good for the Bears. But I think with this offense with CJ Stroud, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Stefan Diggs, there's just not a lot of things that the defense can do to stop the run because if they stop the run, it's play action over the top. So I absolutely love some Joe Mixon in this A minus type level matchup. Jameer Gibbs is the next guy. I think Jameer Gibbs would be higher for me in my week two rankings, but we saw a lot of David Montgomery in week one. And while both of them were able to absolutely finish with 16 fantasy points in week one, going forward, I don't know how it's going to be easy to project elite level ceilings for either unless something were to happen to the other, which I don't want to happen because I have plenty of them on both my teams. But Jameer Gibbs here in the A tier and then Devon A chain. We'll have to see if he actually plays. He is still questionable. Raheem Mostert and him are currently battling injuries. So we'll have to see what happens with Devon before the week two game. We move over to the B tier and we have James Cook, Kenneth Walker, Al Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne, Josh Jacobs. Kind of in this tier, the thing to me that stands out is James Cook is still the most polarizing player out of all these players just because we saw this Buffalo Bills offense. It looked like the Josh Allen show, but James Cook got plenty of run, plenty of after contact yards because he does have that burst and does have that quickness. Kenneth Walker looked absolutely good. Looked like the one, like we said, maybe we should have been drafting Kenneth Walker a little bit higher based on his week one performance. Have him here in the B tier as Kenneth Walker and the Seattle Seahawks are going up against New England. Alvin Kamara, Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne last week had that pretty big snap share with Tank Bigsby. I so I pushed Travis Etienne down my ranks this week, and the fact that they are going up against the Cleveland defense, which is pretty stout up front, and then rounding out with Josh Jacobs having to play without Jordan Love in this week two matchup. Probably going to get the volume. I just don't know how efficient this overall offense is going to be. And rounding out my tiers, we have my C tier with James Conner, Rashad White, Ramondre Stevenson, J.K. Dobbins, who makes a push up the tier rankings this week after that electric week one the explosion there post Achilles post ACL surgeries absolutely incredible Brian Robinson is the clear one for the commanders then Dave Montgomery who we did see have really sustained fantasy football value what is the snapshot going to look like the rest of the season that's my question I think Jameer Gibbs probably ends up taking a bulk of those carries but Dave Montgomery seems like a leader of this offense seems like a bell cow seems like the touchdown goal line dependent running back so we definitely have to take that into consideration then we move on to the D tier Tony Pollard Jerome Ford DeAndre Swift and can the Bears kind of in a week two game bounce back Back, Najee Harris, Aaron Jones, and then Devin Singletary. And Devin Singletary looked like more than a Jag, but this Giants team offense is still pretty abysmal. A little bit worried about that. And then we move on to the E tier with Zach Moss, Raheem Mostert, Zamir White, Ezekiel Elliott, Gus Edwards, Chuba Hubbard, and Javante Williams. So, like I said, answering all start sick questions down below. That's my running back rankings. And when we started off with the wide receiver tier list, we start off in the S tier and we got Tyreek Hill, CeeDee Lamb, Amon or St. Brown, Cooper Cup, AJ Brown, and Justin Jefferson. Very similar to me in my rankings for last week. The 
only difference in this week is Cooper Cup, who is going to be the clear one. We saw him absolutely out target Puka Nakua in the game in week one, but Puka Nakua is battling that injury and is going to be up. So I think we're looking at prime Cooper Cup time here in the S tier, especially with Cooper Cup and this Rams team going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Definitely seemed like a really great matchup in that Cardinals secondary. Like I said, these top tier guys, they're going to be like that. I still have Tyreek as my clear one this week going up against Buffalo. It's a great matchup. CD Lamb versus New Orleans is a great matchup. I'm on St. Brown. So all these guys are in the S tier. Hopefully you got one. And if you got two of these guys, congratulations. Super excited to see what you can do this season. And we waste no time in this A tier. Mike Evans and Baker Mayfield absolutely had a great connection. They had it last season. They had it in week one. Have Mike Evans here in the A tier as they go up against the Detroit Lions. Garrett Wilson got the targets. Didn't necessarily get the football production. But Aaron Rodgers in his Pat McAfee interview yesterday said they need to get Garrett Wilson the ball. It needs to be a little bit more priority. He had 12 total targets. If he can get 14 to 15 in this offense can improve in their overall efficiency. Excited to see what Garrett Wilson can do. Jamar Chase in last week, there was a lot of questions on the start sit about Jamar Chase. They are going up against Kansas City. Jamar Chase is a full go. You got to start him. Rasheed Rice was the breakout candidate. You know, we were all in on Rasheed Rice. And honestly, as season progressed and as we got the offseason progressed, got a little bit more concerned about my Rasheed Rice shares. But I do have Rasheed Rice here in the A tier. Move on to the next guy in this tier. And it's going to be Nico Collins. Clear wide receiver one for the Texans. I know a lot of people had the questions on, hey, what is this snap share going to look like for Nico Collins in the season with Stefan Diggs and Tank Dell? Nico Collins got the targets and honestly didn't even score a touchdown last week and was still a top 12, top 14 wide receiver. If he is going to have that touchdown level upside, absolutely excited for Nico Collins here in the A tier. And the last guy in this tier is going to be Debo. And Debo Samuel going up against Minnesota. It's an A level matchup. They are using him all around the formation, especially with CMC being hurt. Have to have Debo Samuel here in the A tier. We move on to the B tier. We got Jalen Waddle. Like I said, Jalen Waddle last week dealt with that injury, but still was able to put up very good fantasy football numbers in the limited amount of game that he did play. We got Brandon Ayuk sliding in. Good matchup as well, but I think the touchdown upside, of course, gives Debo Samuel the boost in my overall rankings. Then we got the rookie level wide receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. Well, it's not good for Marvin Harrison Jr. I hear you. So me coming back to the well, having him in the B tier, y'all might be feeling a sort of way about Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm still super excited for Marvin Harrison Jr. in this overall offense. Malik Neighbors is the next guy. The Giants as a whole are taking on the Washington Commanders. So I do like this matchup, even though we did see Daniel Jones absolutely struggle in week one. Drake London, who only had 3.5 fantasy points in week one, you're concerned. But I have to put Drake London here based on the talent going up against Philadelphia. We'll see. If we get burned again by Drake London, definitely getting pushed down the rankings even further and then rounding it out in this tier with Devontae Adams, who had a pretty, it's a pretty bad matchup with Baltimore, but I think they're going to be behind so much they're going to have to throw the ball. And if they're throwing the ball, the target share is going to go Devontae Adams' way. Then when we enter the C tier, I just decided to lay out my own overall tiers from the rest of these tiers for you so that you guys can just take a minute pause look through this see what your start sit questions are the thing is like i said i want to provide the best fantasy football rankings for you in the most concise format possible so hit that like and subscribe button if you're new i'm answering all start sit questions helping you win a fantasy football championship in week two but this is kind of how i see the rest of the tiers playing out on the c tier we got michael Pittman, Devontae smith chris olave dj moore chris gowan zay flowers d tier dk metcalf george pickens stefan diggs Jaden reed even without jordan love a uh, Presumably in week two, you got to put him here. I think they're going to find a ways to get him the ball, kind of like a mini Debo. Xavier Worthy, Amari Cooper. Each year, we started off with Terry McLaurin, which with Jaden Daniels kind of being out, you're a little bit concerned with. Tank Dell, J-Mo, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Deontay Johnson, who I was huge on coming into the season. It's not looking good for this Panthers overall offense. F tier, Brian Thomas, Keenan Allen, Lad McConkie, Keon Coleman. You know, these rookies, Lad, Keon, Brian Thomas. We saw a lot of exciting things in week one. Could maybe debate that I need to push up Brian Thomas Jr. in these rankings. Khalil Shakir and then Rashid Shahid rounding it out. And then finally, in my G tier, we got Cortland Sutton, Brandon Cooks, Josh Palmer, Tyler Lockett, Christian Watson, and JSN. And, and listen, like I said, if you guys are enjoying this video, if you like this format, let me know down below because I will continue to do this week by week. When we start off my quarterback rankings, we started off with Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, and the S tier. Absolutely incredible that Anthony Richardson passing attack looked absolutely amazing. So I'm pumped to talk and look at Anthony Richardson as a whole. Pumped for that. We move on to the A tier. We got CJ Stroud, Jane Daniels. Jane Daniels didn't look like the best real life quarterback, but in fantasy football, with that Konami code rushing level upside, absolutely loved it. Jared Goff, Tua Tungo Iloa, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy. Moved to the B tier. We got Maddie Boy Stafford, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields, I think if he has a really good week in week two, we're going to be looking at him being the starter for the rest of the season if he can maintain it. A little bit of worry with the passing attack, but he did look super mobile like he always is. So, got to love some Justin Fields there. Joe Burrow hopefully can kind of start to turn things around. He probably 
really selected him a lot earlier than some of these other guys. So a little bit of worry there for Joe Burrow. Then in the C tier, we got Caleb Williams, Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Geno Smith, Daniel Jones, and Derek Carr. When we move over to our tight end rankings, we started off in the S tier with Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta, Trey McBride. This whole tight end position let us down in week one. We need some major bounce backs, especially for us early round drafting tight ends. We need it. Move on to the A tier. We got George Kittle, Don Kincaid, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews, and Isaiah Likely. And I wanted to say this, Mark Andrews ahead of Isaiah Likely, you might be saying to me, Caleb, you're a freaking idiot. And the reason is Las Vegas, good matchup for the Baltimore Ravens. If you look, same level of snap share. Isaiah Likely had 12 targets. Mark Andrews only had three. And I'm not saying that Mark Andrews is going to predominantly out target Isaiah Likely. I think Isaiah Likely was a major wafer wire addition in week one because this offensive line for the Ravens really struggled against the Kansas City pass rush. We'll have to see how they do against the Raiders pass rush, but I am excited for both these guys. I think Mark Andrews was a great buy low opportunity if you had him. If not, go try to trade for him before week two and move on to the beach here. We got Evan Ingram. Brock Bowers looked super good for a rookie level tight end. Excited to see how he continues to build off that week one performance. Dallas Gallard, Dalton Schultz, Pat Frymuth, and then Hunter Henry, who was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, he always flies under the radar, but he did look good in week one fantasy football. So these next two things here is going to be my defensive rankings for week two fantasy football. Let me know any questions down below. So like I said, guys, I want you here in the community providing the best fantasy football content that I can. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Hit that like and subscribe button. Check out these two videos if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.